The new Blackmagic Video Assist HDR monitors now support Blackmagic RAW recording. Hi, I'm Johnny from Cinema 5D and I'm here with Craig from Blackmagic Design. Craig, how are you? I'm very well, Johnny. How are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. And it's uh, IBC 2019. I'm a bit older, actually maybe not taller, but Blackmagic RAW is moving for forward. What's new? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 12 months ago, we were showing Blackmagic RAW for the first time, introduced it as a new technology we wanted to see bring RAW solutions to our cameras and post-production, really kind of revolutionize and challenge some of the RAW formats that we saw out there. But in those 12 months, we've now seen it come from beta into Ursa Mini Pro. You have it on both of the pocket cameras now as a RAW function in there. And we've seen it developed inside Resolve 16 as well with some new tools and some new processes. At the show, we're pleased to announce that um, Blackmagic RAW is now in beta on the Ursa Broadcast products. We've seen some announcements in the software and post-production world as well from Media Composer, uh, Premiere Pro and Edius. Now okay, 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 not so fast, not so fast. Okay. So what you're saying actually, but from that point onward, Adobe Premiere Pro, Media Composer, and I think even Edios yeah. uh, all have plugins that you are supplying in order to work with the uh, Blackmagic RAW on the timeline? So Edios is native inside of their own software, and with Media Composer and Premiere Pro, that's a plugin. But in all cases, that will now enable you in your nonlinear tool of choice to start working with Blackmagic RAW. So what we're seeing is Blackmagic RAW starting to move a lot more away from the core camera products that we had last year. And it's certainly an aim of us where we want Blackmagic RAW to be a post-production option for as many people as possible. Okay, but in order to uh, come to the post-production with Blackmagic RAW, obviously you need to record it yep. on camera. And until now, the possibility was only on your own cameras and here we come to the nice part you have a range of new monitors which can do what so yeah we're pleased to announce the new um, video assist 12 gig hdr off-board recorders so these devices um, introduce quite a lot of new technology to us in the video assist range uh, the 12 gig sdi they are hdr based so we have a 2500 nit display for brightness but also we have Blackmagic RAW built in to these products as well. So what that means is we've taken the hardware encoder that we had in our own cameras, added it to the Video Assist family, and this is the really cool bit. We can now use that for recording to Blackmagic RAW from third-party cameras. So at the show, we're showing the Panasonic EVA-1, and also we support the Canon C300 Mark II, um, and recording from the RAW output of those cameras to Blackmagic RAW on the new Video Assist products. So for now, it's only uh, supporting SDI output, not HDMI output. Yeah, currently SDI, currently only those two products, those two cameras, um, but it's an ongoing work that will continue with the camera manufacturers. We look to sort of see how we can profile those cameras, then support them in the Blackmagic RAW codec, so you get the highest quality possible in what we think is the best codec for RAW performance. Technically, is it possible also to stream, let's call it, to stream out the signal uh, via HDMI and still get uh, uh, Blackmagic RAW? To be looked at, that would be down to the work that we do ongoing with the camera manufacturers. So there's a large number of cameras out there that have HDMI output for it, but we'll have some further advice as we go through and develop the, the support. Personally, what I'm happy to see that uh, manufacturers like Canon and Panasonic are uh, actually talking to you directly and uh, obviously showing open mind in order to support the Blackmagic RAW product. It's, that's really nice. Uh, but one more thing for me, uh, because you were quite fast talking about the monitor that needs the brightness of yeah. it, and this is a big difference between the uh, current generation and the older one. Just a little bit about this. Absolutely. Yeah. So the older video assists really weren't designed for HDR. So they're 800 nit. They were designed really for as an off-board recorder or field monitor. These devices are designed from the ground up to support those HDR requirements. So it's a 2500 nit output on the brightness of both of these, whether it's the 5 inch or the 7 inch display. Uh, it will support full DCI P3 color space and color gamut through those displays as well. And with it being a 12 gig SDI device, we'll also support 2160p60 and also 4K DCI formats into the recorders. How about the power consumption? Because we obviously know this is sometimes with a lot of your products. That's, you know, it's a, it's a, the point is a bit sensitive here. Yeah. Sure. Um, and those new monitors, when you use, uh, you use them to record the Blackmagic, Blackmagic RAW, how is the power consumption? 
to be confirmed in the release and information. I haven't seen any of the kind of output um, or duration times myself. Uh, they're brand new products I've not really tried myself. But what we have changed is the battery format. So these will now use an L-series battery, so you can get the multiple um, cell um, like an MPF 970 or something and really sort of increase the performance of the, 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 uh, the recording and the monitoring on these devices. Okay, how about pricing and availability? Uh, pricing is 725 or 725 euros for the 5 inch and 895 for the 12 inch device and these products are looking to be shipping with us by the end of the month. By the end of this September month? Absolutely. Nice. Greg, so to summarize, we have a brighter monitor, we have a, a, a new recording format option, which is the Blackmagic Raw, mm -hmm. uh, supporting now by third-party cameras, and your and the uh, editing platforms like Adobe Premiere, um, what else, the Composer, and there was a Grass and Valley, Edios, yeah. yeah, all supporting now natively mm -hmm. your uh, Blackmagic Raw. Anything else that I missed here? No, um, the beta on the Ursa broadcast, we're showing it at the show and that will introduce Blackmagic Raw along with a number of other updates. That will come slightly later after the show, so keep your eyes out for that really on the uh, support pages and the updates on our website. And as the product comes out as well, we'll continue to update what we can for third-party camera support on these new products. Looking forward, I mean it's obviously very exciting. Craig, thank you very much. Guys, thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our, to our YouTube channel. Thank you.